As the movie begins, we see an old woman crawling on the floor of her apartment. Her legs seem too weak to support her body, so she resorts to crawling. The apartment is dimly lit, and there is an air of gloom and despair. The old woman ties a long rope to the table and throws the other end out of the window. She appears to hate the apartment so much that she is trying to escape it by any means necessary. Despite her old age and frail body, she climbs outside and grabs the rope tightly. Just as she prepares to slide down the rope, her hands slip, and she falls. It seems as though she has died, but when the camera pans to her, we see that the rope has miraculously held onto her leg. The old lady tries to reach the ground, but the rope pulls her back upstairs, back into her apartment. Then, the windows shut forever. Several months later, a young woman named Anna arrives at the same apartment to rent it. She is greeted by the building manager Muller and the current tenant, who is a different old lady than the one we saw at the start. As she explores the apartment she finds it quite bewitching. She gets excited to have found such a great deal on such a prime location in Vienna. Before signing the rent agreement, Anna asked the old lady why she was moving out. The lady replied that she wanted to travel the world, which seemed odd to Anna given the woman's age. But she brushed off her doubts and proceeded to share her own story with the old lady. Anna told her that she was new to the city and had come with her ex-boyfriend. However, things didn't work out, and now she was alone. As Anna spoke, the old lady became increasingly anxious and asked if she wanted the apartment or not. Anna said yes, and Muller handed her the rent agreement contract. She tried to sign it, but the pen wouldn't work. Luckily, the old lady had a spare one in her hand, indicating that she was in a hurry to hand over the apartment to Anna. As soon as the deal was done, the old lady took her belongings and left happily. Muller also departed, but not before telling Anna to call him if she needed any help. Anna was left alone in her new apartment, feeling a mix of excitement and apprehension. She quickly got to work cleaning and rearranging the place to make it her own. She moves in her stuff and started to spruce up the place by painting the walls and cleaning up all the dusty corners. But every time Anna left the apartment to throw away the trash, she came back to find the place a mess again. The fresh fruits she had left out were now rotten, the new paint was dirty, and even the old piece of cloth that she had thrown out was back on the shelf. Despite the strange occurrences, Anna didn't pay much attention and just cleaned up the place again and again. However, as days went by, the constant hard work started taking a toll on her health. Her eyes became wrinkly and dark, and her face began to look tired and worn out. One night, as Anna slept on the couch, the radio suddenly turned on by itself. When she went to turn it off, she saw her reflection in the mirror and was shocked to see that her face had changed drastically. The next morning, she stormed over to the building manager, Muller, and accused him of renting her a haunted apartment. She demanded her security deposit back, but Muller told her that it wasn't possible. Anna was furious and didn't know what to do. Muller shows her a clause that states she cannot leave the apartment until a new tenant arrives. Anna is understandably furious and threatens to report him to the police. However, Muller remains unfazed and warns her to abide by the contract. Despite Muller's warning, Anna refuses to stay in the haunted apartment and heads to a clinic to obtain a medical report, hoping to use it to file a complaint. But the doctor bizarrely tells her that her wrinkly skin and gray hair are normal for a 25-year-old woman. Anna is outraged and shows her ID, only to find out that the contents have been erased. To escape the spooky apartment, Anna checks into a hotel. But there, she has to pay extra money because her ID is missing crucial information. That night, Anna wakes up feeling weak, and things take a dark turn. As it turns out, Anna has rapidly aged to the point of being like an 80-year-old woman. Her teeth fall out as she coughs and walks to the sink. She confronts Muller and learns that if a tenant leaves the apartment, they age rapidly until they die. The apartment doesn't like to be left alone, so a tenant must always be present. Muller reveals that the haunted apartment has been in existence for more than a decade, and in one instance, some schoolgirls lived there and became old women within days. The incident caused nationwide unrest, and a minister who attempted to destroy the apartment was mysteriously found dead before his plans commenced. The government stopped caring about the apartment and kept it a secret. Anna tries to burn down the apartment but fails, and the apartment starts choking her. Muller saves her life by removing a piece of cloth from her mouth, which was the same one that always lay above the shelf. As a result, Anna is left alone and dejected, knowing that she needs to find a tenant in order to escape the haunted apartment. Despite being disliked by Muller, it is his responsibility as the caretaker to ensure that the apartment is occupied. Before departing, Muller advises Anna to find a tenant, as it is the only way out of the situation. Desperate for a solution, Anna puts on some makeup and visits her ex-boyfriend Daniel for help. However, to her dismay, he fails to recognize her and mistakes her for his ex-girlfriend's grandmother. 
As Anna tries to explain the truth, Daniel's new girlfriend arrives to pick him up, leaving Anna alone with her troubles. Anna realizes that it's her perfect chance to get rid of the apartment and set them up instead. She doesn't say anything and the couple leaves. Later at night, as Anna sleeps, the radio suddenly starts playing and objects move on their own. It seems the apartment is trying to be friendly by preparing a meal for her. When Anna wakes up, she finds food near her couch, but instead of eating it, she throws it away. However, when she discovers that the apartment has also made tea, she decides to give it a try. Anna slowly pours the tea into a cup and takes a sip. To her surprise, she enjoys it and decides to pick up a biscuit from the trash where she had thrown away the food earlier. Gradually. Anna's fragility has left her unable to cook for herself, forcing her to rely on her only companion, the haunted apartment. As time passes, Anna's condition deteriorates rapidly, leaving her in need of a cane to walk and her body appearing as if she's lived over a century. Upon noticing something moving under her skin, Anna begins to peel off layers of skin to reveal a strange wire-like substance inside. Aware that her fate is quickly approaching, Anna reaches out to Muller for assistance. Meanwhile, a couple arrives to rent the apartment, who is none other than Daniel and his new girlfriend. As expected, Daniel and his girlfriend are lured in by the affordable rent and the good quality of furniture in the apartment. They appreciate the peacefulness of the area, with no other tenants nearby. Eventually, they agree to sign the lease agreement presented by Muller. As Daniel prepares to sign the contract, Anna, who is watching from nearby, suddenly remembers her own painful experience of being trapped in a similar situation. She recalls the misery she has endured because of this cursed apartment. So, before her ex-boyfriend can seal his fate, she pours hot tea on his hand, forcing him to retreat. Anna then shouts at the couple to leave her apartment and never return. This decision reflects her enduring love for Daniel and her willingness to sacrifice herself to end the apartment's curse. Even Muller is taken aback by Anna's bravery and determination. As he prepares to depart, Anna instructs him to lock the door from the outside and not return for several years. She hopes that by keeping the apartment empty, the cycle will finally break, and the malevolent spirit will perish. Muller agrees to her request and bids her farewell. And so, Anna remains all alone in the apartment, facing her fate with bravery and dignity. With no visitors and too weak to leave, Anna stands by the window, taking in the breeze and finding a sense of calm. All the fear and anxiety she had experienced has disappeared, and Anna has finally come to terms with her fate. She quietly asks the apartment to be kind, then makes her way to the couch, where she will spend her final moments. The procedure begins and Anna quickly succumbs to it. Her head is absorbed by the couch, becoming a permanent part of it. Gradually, her body also blends into the fabric. All that is left behind are her clothes and from her heart, wires emerge and weave themselves into the cushions of the couch. Her head turns into a white cloth, and beside it are two other white cloths, suggesting that the apartment uses its victims to regenerate itself. However, with no more victims available, it is likely that the apartment will soon come to an end. This is Movie Breakdown, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.